What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the interweb? I'm doing something I've not done for a while, and it's going back to retro game content. And also, something you may not have noticed, or may have noticed since the last time you saw me, I'm not fat anymore. Look at this, 218 pounds. A mixture of skin, bones, muscles, and sex appeal. But today, we're talking about two things. First, I can now walk up the stairs without feeling like I'm about to pass out. And two, we're gonna be talking about these games, the limited run Jack and Daxters. Were they really worth it? Do I wish I had done anything differently? For those of you guys that don't know this, I'm the reason these happened, kinda, but also kinda not. So I made a video shortly after the release of Jack and Daxter, and I was talking about, yo, should limited run games make physical versions of this? Should we have a limited physical version of these games for collecting purposes, just so we can have a physical copy? And after I made that video, it kind of took off. People got excited about it. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. I'm really good at manipulating people. Why don't I start emailing them? So I ultimately started bullying them, constantly emailing them, not saying anything mean, of course, but constantly emailing, hey, sir, would you like to make Jack and Daxter? Hey, sir, would you like to make Jack and Daxter? I bugged Doug or whoever's in charge of their Reddit and their Twitter and their uh, email for so long. And then ultimately, in it was like late 2018, I believe, they announced this one and we got it. And the cool part about this is we got our new little mini, you know, booklets here. We got cards, a whole new game, a reversible cover. Of course, the first Jack and Daxter is still the worst Jack and Daxter. No one's going to argue that. That includes the Lost Frontier. The Lost Frontier is fantastic. Stop, you know, bullying it. Leave it alone, please. Then there's Jack 2. Jack 2 is a classic. It'll always be really good. There's not really much I can say about it. You've all played it. I've talked about it to death. Jack 3, still my favorite Jack and Daxter game out of all the ones that have came out, including the PlayStation Move one. So that would be really freaking cool if we were to get more Jack and Daxter games and they were in the style of this one. And then we got Jack X and Jack X kind of sucked. If you guys were at my live stream way back in like God, at this point, three, four years ago, at this point almost, I played through this on stream and I hated every single moment of it. There is no worse racing game in the history of racing games. And I would know that I am Mexican and the whole reason Fast and Furious is still made is because of us. I play so many racing games and this is the worst one I have ever played. If I had to go back, I would take this ballpoint pen and stab myself in the belly button to commit seppuku. But unfortunately, I cannot go back in time and do that. So that kind of sucks. For example, when we look at these games, right? Was it really worth it getting all four of these? I paid $90. Wait, no, I didn't. 30, 60, 90, 120. I paid $120 for all three of these. And that's actually not too bad when you think about it. Because that's four AAA games. Four AAA games for $120. That's a really good deal. But the question that I really have, was it worth it, refers to why? Like, did I really need physical copies of these games after I have like five copies of each game on PlayStation 2? I have the PlayStation 3 remaster. I have the Vita version. I have these in many capacities. And I, of course, already had the digital version. So this video at this point is going to transition into more of a let's talking about like, why do we still collect? remasters of old games like what was the point of really asking for these outside of collecting purposes i can enjoy this game digitally just as much as i did here physically and at the end of the day the version that is on these discs is a version that is not necessarily complete now i will say this i think this version has the speed run or speed runnable version on it i think this one is before they patched it and so that's probably pretty good for those guys but for just like the regular consumer was it worth getting these games? And should we even consider, you know, collecting PlayStation 2 or the PlayStation 4, or at this point in a year, or actually not even a year, like six months from now, PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 5? Is it worth it? Like, that's a hard question. Throughout this pandemic, I've been still collecting games, but I've not been collecting them in the way I used to. 
I've been collecting them digitally. I've gotten so many games on Steam. I've gotten so many games on Xbox and Switch. The only physical games I have gotten throughout this past month is Persona 5 Royale and Final Fantasy VII Remake. I haven't gotten any other physical games. And these games include stuff like WWE 2K20, NBA 2K20, The Borderlands Collection, and so many other marvelous games that would honestly I'd rather have physically but now that I'm playing them digitally, it's like, do I need a physical copy? Did we really need physical copies of a game that we could play 10 billion times over? And with the way PlayStation is going, where they're number two in the market, right next to Nintendo Switch and well past the Xbox One, like, these games are going to be around forever there digitally. They're going to be here forever. We have the remasters, which is a better version of these games. The remaster on PlayStation 3 is a much better version than these games. It's at a higher resolution. It's at a higher frame rate, and it just plays smoother. These are just direct ports of the PlayStation 2 version. Of course, they've been HD-ified, so you can't really tell as much, but they still don't look as good as the HD remaster on PlayStation 3, so to say. So when we guide these, we literally just got the PlayStation 2 version over again. And when we play them on PlayStation 4, we're getting the exact same experience as we did on playing them on PlayStation 2, except we're using a PlayStation 4 controller. That's literally it, and there's trophies. But other than that, we don't really have a solid reason to have these games. Like something like Final Fantasy VII Remake, we can justify having physical copies. We justify having physical copies for literally any game. But when it comes to PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 4 ports, outside of collecting, do you really need these? And now that I have them, I paid $120 for them. But each one of these goes for anywhere between $70 to $100 on eBay. If you want to get all four of these now, if you're a new Jack and Baxter fan, or you show up, you know, 20 years from now and you want to get these, but you didn't have them back in the day, you could be paying like $500 for all four of these. And that's including the Jack 4 mock case that is eventually going to be shipped out. They're having COVID-19 issues. So that's why we haven't gotten it yet. But when you think about it, why do we put ourselves through this for physical copies? We woke up super early and we raced to buy these when they're literally just the PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 4 version. In my personal opinion, I love having them. I really do. I love having the physical version of these. I love Jack and Baxter, but it wasn't really all that worth it. I mean, how many times have I played the physical versions? I've played Jack and Daxter none because that game is the worst game in the series. I played Jack 2 maybe twice. I played Jack 3 once. I have never even put Jack X in the PlayStation, not even once. Why? Because I just play the digital versions. Was buying the digital version and then a year later getting these physical versions, there was no reason to do that. Like, think about this. You have Uncharted Collection physical, and then you get it on PlayStation Plus for free, or you get it on PlayStation Plus for free first. Why would you get it again digitally? You're gonna still play, I mean, why would you get it again physically, I mean to say. You're gonna still play it digitally, you're not gonna play it physically. And as a collector, that's a weird realization that I've had. A lot of games that I want to collect, I have no point to collect. They are straight up and down, just pointless. Like, for example, I just got WWE 2K20 on Steam. I would love to have that game on PlayStation 4 for the collection. But if I got 2K20 on PlayStation 4 right now, that would be pointless. The only way I'll ever get that game physically on PlayStation is if like it went on sale for like maybe five or ten dollars way after this generation is over literally all these games i've gotten on uh pc from borderlands 3 to resident evil 3 to shinmu 3 to any game that ends in 3 i i could get them physically on console but there's no reason to but when you look at it the other way around you buy a game physically and then you get it digitally later that's a completely different thing like for example i got a final fantasy 7 remake physical on playstation but in a year, when it comes to PC, I'm getting it digitally. In a year, when it has a PlayStation 5 remaster, I'm getting it digitally. In a year, when it has an Xbox One X or Series X, whatever the new Xbox is called, I would get that game digitally. I wouldn't buy it again physically because I already have a physical copy. And as a collector, that's weird to say because I've kind of, I'm growing out of the idea of collecting modern games. These games are all downloadable. 
and they rely on the servers literally all of them day one patches updates that complete the game especially resident evil 2 like when this stuff ends and the servers go down we lose all access to these games like they we won't be able to go online for it to register that hey you own this game you can play it that's not gonna be a thing anymore six months and boom those games are gone and that's digital and then physical is the same way because resident evil 2 remake you get it you get just the campaign you get none of the extra outfits you get none of the game modes that completed the game you never get any of the side campaigns that came out with it it's just kind of a waste when you think about it collecting modern games forcing physical copies and when i look at these yeah i'm glad i have them but in the long run they really aren't worth it because eventually these are going to be just disc with the game on it with stuff that i can't play later like any of the updates to the patches that came out since the version that was printed on these discs that actually helped the game a lot they're straight up gone i will never be able to play those once this is over once this gen's over servers are down and i play these it's like they're trapped in time almost or when you collect something from playstation 3 or 2 or 1 or even further back or any other console except for the current gen stuff you get you know a liability that those games can be played forever and ever but now it's not really like that and that kind of sucks it's a weird realization as a collector but with that being said ladies and gentlemen the interweb do you think these games are worth buying physically if you did buy them physically or you haven't bought them physically would you buy them physically and with that being said ladies and gentlemen of the interweb i am cruzando first time in a long time that i've said that try not to die don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next video.